Always great chatting my, with my next guest, the double champ, Patricio Pitbull Frete, will be defending his title this Friday at Bellator 255 against Emmanuel Sanchez. Patricio, how are you today? I'm good, my friend. Thank you. How about you? I'm doing awesome. Always great talking to you. When did you find out about this fight? I knew you knew that you were going to fight Emmanuel Sanchez next, but when did you actually get the date that you were going to be fighting him on April 2nd? It was a couple of days before I boarded the plane for that promotion from Showtime in February. Okay, so plenty of notice, which is great. Um, and speaking of Showtime, how excited are you to be on this new platform? Uh, this is where Strike Force used to be. Uh, what, what does it mean to be a part of the, the Showtime family now? Yeah, I'm very excited because it's a very big platform. And I'm excited for, for all the, the the things that it can do to my image and to be in a, in a channel like this. Where do you feel like Emmanuel Sanchez has improved since the first time you guys fought? Yeah, he's still the same fighter. He seems to have a little bit more of precision on his shots. Uh, he misses less punches than he used to, but he's pretty much the same fighter he used to be when we first fought. How have you structured this training camp? Has it been all back home in Brazil? Have you done some training in the U.S.? How have you put this camp together? Yeah, this, this camp was pretty much done entirely in Brazil. Um, all of my camps I do here, with exception for the Chandler camp, because I needed to be more focused and, and alone with no distractions. So I did half of it here in the U.S. But usually when I have a fight coming up, if there's something I'm in need or lacking, there's, I don't have available here, I'll bring like a new sparring or something like that. But all my camps are doing entirely at my gym at Pitbull Brothers. By the sounds of it, you didn't bring anyone else in specifically to train for Emmanuel. It was just your regular camp, I'm assuming? Yeah, there's a guy on my team that can emulate his style pretty well, so I didn't need to bring anyone from outside. Who have you mainly got to work with for this camp? I imagine your brother, Patriki. Who else have you got to work with uh, for this training camp? Yeah, no, I, my, my brother, I, we don't spar anymore because we end up hurting each other, so it's been a, f a few years that we don't do that. Uh, when we train at the same time, it's pretty much uh, one giving tips to the other, uh, coaching, not not sparring uh my sparring partners were some prospects from our team uh, franklin ferreira he's a featherweight gabriel ramos another upcoming featherweight uh lucas cruz he's a lightweight and otavio dos santos another lightweight who's going to be making the trip down there with you uh in terms of your corner who will be in the cage with you that night yeah here with me my brother eric our boxing coach everton uh anistavio gaspazio medeiros uh, another one of our trainers. Uh, my nutritionist, Francisco. Uh, and also, uh, we have another fighter on the same card. But the ones in my corner will be Eric, Patrick, and Anistavio. And speaking of Captain Eric, uh, have you spoken to Henry Cejudo at all during this camp? Yeah, uh, after the Showtime promo, I went to Arizona. I stayed there for a week. So we trained together. We talked about how he arranged this camp, how I do mine, and we exchange information on future plans. Do you get the sense that he's going to come out of retirement just based after talking to him? I know it wasn't that long, but do you get the sense he's going to come back? Yeah, uh, he's not in fight shape, but he's not out of shape. He, kept, he keeps training, he keeps helping his training partners, and I feel like from, from what we, we talked, I feel like he's going to return soon, but I don't think it's going to be during the pandemic. He's enjoying his new girlfriend. He's enjoying his vacation in time. But yeah, I, I believe he's going to return. And someone else I know who was uh, stopping by that camp at Fight Ready, I'm not sure if you got to see him, but I know Vitor Belfort was there for a bit. Did you get to see him when you were there or was he not there when you were at the, at the camp? We spoke on the phone before he got there, but we didn't get the opportunity to meet. Back to your fight. Um, how do you see the matchup playing out on April 2nd? Yeah, I predict I'm going to knock him out in the first round. If you come out of this healthy and not looking past April 2nd, when is the earliest you think you'd want to fight AJ McKee? Because that's obviously going to get the winner of this fight. I come out on scattered from this fight with no injuries. The sooner the better for me. Like June, July at the latest, but in one month, two months, it would be good. How do you feel like you match up against AJ? Because he's got a very unorthodox style. He has a, a kind of reckless style. I think he's, uh, he tries to rush things a little bit. Uh, he gets excited for the finish. 
and he overexposes himself. And when you're in a title fight, in a five round fight, uh, you have to have a little bit of patience, a little bit different and, and colder approach. Not exactly pace, be patient, but be colder. Uh, and think bad about your decisions and what you're going to do in the fight. So I think I'm going to bring that reality to him. I'm going to make him realize it's a very different thing up here. We had an interesting situation a few weeks ago with Piotr Jan losing his bantamweight title to Aljamain Sterling off a of DQ. What was your reaction to that whole situation with you know Sterling earning the belt off a of DQ win? Yeah, uh, it's not not the best way to win a title. It's, it's part of the rules. But if it was if if this happened with me, I wouldn't be happy winning the title by DQ either. It's not how a title could be won. And my last question, did you ever get that thing sorted out with Tapology? I know they had you ranked pretty low. Did anyone ever speak to you from Tapology about that ranking? Uh, can I answer that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we were aware of the Tapology rankings. Uh, we were asked about it in, a, in, a, in an interview, and so he replied. But the guys from Tapology, they said it's from – they don't agree with the rankings, but it's from – voting around the world so it's not like gotcha yeah i was wondering that that's what i figured i know that thing kind of got blown up so i didn't think it was something dated it was it was it was people voting on it correct that that, that's why it was ranked so high okay gotcha so no ill will towards tapology because it's obviously they don't make the rankings it's the it's the fans right you should blame them yeah he said one more reason to not have rankings being based on fan voting what do you think of the Bellator rankings that it's, you know, media members and, you know, some it's, it's a mix of people in terms of making up the rankings. Do you think it's it's needed in the sport? Yeah, I'm a little bit skeptic with the, some media rankings and how they're structured because I, I don't think it's it's unbiased as it should be. You know, uh, one thing you know for sure, the champion is the number one and the, the guy coming off more wins and will beat other people is the second one, and then the third and all that. It should be more merit-based, and sometimes it's more popular. To be Very well said. Uh, Patricio, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Uh, you got to check this out. It's Bellator 255 coming up here on Friday. Um, anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Just thank you to you, my friends and my team.